My guests are Katie Peace and Matthew Paul Isaacson from CSA STL, which is also known as Community Supported Art St. Louis. Um, so in the first segment, you were really telling, telling me what it's all about. And Matthew told us a little bit about your background. We have some images of the artwork of the different artists um, in this year's. Do you call it a collect this year's uh, cohort share or season, good share? Yeah. OK, season. <laughs> um, so let's maybe walk through those. And sure. you can tell us a bit about it. So um, I'll let you take it away. Well, this piece is a ceramic vessel by Tom Dykus. He's a local ceramicist. He works for Kruger Pottery, and he's going to be making fermentation crocks for us. So they'll all be of the same size, of the same type, but individual objects. Okay. This is an example of work by a comic artist named Ray Nadine, and she's going to be creating a limited edition mini comic specifically for the CSA, which oh, we're really excited about. This is Catherine Miller. She's a printmaker. And she's really interesting because she's going to be making 3D objects, but using printmaking techniques. So something that's usually 2D is going to become 3D with her work. This is Eric Woods of Firecracker Press. Oh, right. He's very well known in St. Louis. We're very excited to have him involved. And he's going to be making a brand new print for the CSA as well. This is Emily Peters. She's a fibers artist. She's going to be making hand-woven, hand-dyed table centerpieces. This is a photograph by Caroline Philippone. She has a photo series called St. Louis, My Love. And she's going to be doing uh, five editions of 10, so um, five different photographs. Mm -hmm. And they'll all be of St. Louis locations and businesses. Okay. This is Brandon Daniels. He's a painter. He's currently getting his MFA at Washington University. He's going to be making paintings very much like this, um, but just like Tom Dykus, they will all be individual objects um, just made in the same vein. Mm -hmm. This is Andrew Ramist. He's actually a professor in the architecture department at Washington University, but he's involved for his photographs. He does a series of close-up photos of the arch, and he's going to be doing um, very much the same as Caroline, so there'll be five different photographs involved. And so with the way that it works with the members, are they, once they see that first, like when Matthew finishes his first <laughs> project and you guys get together, mm -hmm. how, do you, how does it break down? Have they already pre-selected which artist they... Well, every member gets one piece from every artist. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I wasn't sure if that, when you were saying, mm -hmm. you know, um, how many pieces would be mm -hmm. created. Got it. So everyone gets... Wow, that's exactly. a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Of work. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Wow. No, but that's... A, no. So I see... No, over uh, on the break, you were mentioning that you're not originally from St. Louis right. or from the East Coast and mm -hmm. came here. Was this part of your idea when you got here, looking at the art scene, scene and <laughs> saying, but hey, this doesn't exist. What if I could create this here? Sort of, yeah. I mean, I got here. I was really eager to get involved in the local community to do something. My background's in art history and arts management. And I really like this model. I've seen it in other cities. And when St. Louis didn't have it, I thought, well, I think I can make that happen. So let's do it. And, and I, you just started this, yeah, right? Yeah. And I have two friends who are wonderful. And they are helping me make this happen, Gardner Roderick and Cassandra Howard. And the three of us are really you know, just going for it and trying to make it happen and with the help of all of our artists, obviously. Yeah, no, and Matthew, I mean, what do you like about this sort of model? What, as an artist, what, what really appeals to you about this? I mean, what really is personal is it's, it's a very grassroots thing, and so it's something also that we can connect with the community, so people that don't even know us, um, we get an opportunity to meet them, greet them, you know, talk about our art, and, you know, that might lead to other opportunities. So that's kind of what makes it very personable. Mm -hmm. No, so that's, you bring up a good point, too, is like the marketing that can come outside of that, which mm -hmm. is, more people see your artwork, more people can come directly to yeah. you and buy, or a gallery might host you know, an exhibit. So yeah, no, I think this is an awesome concept. So where can people go for more information and when you get all the, f the fine details of your upcoming events as right. well? Um, well, our website is www.csastl.org. And we are on Facebook and Twitter. And we would love for people to come and talk to us and find us and you know, get involved. I did have a question because you said this was, you know, based, it's a model and it obviously comes from the community supported agriculture, but there are other arts models across Absolutely. the country. Was there one in particular, like in New York or? Well, it started in Minneapolis, so mm -hmm. that's really where the template comes from, and they're really instrumental in helping people start theirs. They have a really good template set up, so you can say this is how it has worked and this is how we can make it work. Um, but I did just move from Pittsburgh, and they had started one right before I left, so I was very excited to see that take, take So you over had a there. chance to see that model. Yeah. And so is there, does the St. Louis model have any 
different, what's the variation, is there a variant? I mean, the artists, I think. Every yeah. city kind of makes it different because of who gets involved. The jury and the artists really make it unique. Okay, all right, well no, this is really, this is gonna be so interesting to see how it plays out, and good luck to you in finishing yeah, you. your, and creating <laughs> your pieces, I should say, and thank you again for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, well don't go anywhere. When we return on STL TV Live, Sloka will be here with a long list of events to talk about in honor of Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. We'll be right back.